we got more matches announced for SummerSlam. What up, Marks? What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Radar for Racist Studios. Let's get to our SmackDown review and reaction from a somewhat interesting episode of Friday Night SmackDown that followed up on the what transpired last week on Friday Night SmackDown. The show started off with Sasha Banks coming out talking her trash about Bianca Belair, why she turned heel on her and everything like that, saying it was all her. That is the reason why Bianca Belair is hanging out with Megan Thee Stallion, uh, gets an SB, main event of WrestleMania, all that stuff. It's all about her. She's feel dis disrespected by Bianca the entire time after uh, she lost to her at WrestleMania. So she challenges her to match at SummerSlam. Bianca comes out. So I'll see you at SummerSlam. Whoa. SummerSlam, Bianca comes out, then Zelina Vega comes out. Now, Bianca would accept the SummerSlam challenge from Sasha and then accept a challenge from Zelina Vega for tonight's episode of Friday Night SmackDown. At first, it seemed to be a championship match, and it was changed to kind of like, I guess, a championship contenders matches to do it nowadays. So if you win that, uh, if she won that, then she would face the winner of Sasha Bianca at SummerSlam. Yeah, I thought it was a good segment. I thought uh, both girls did, did did what they had to do. I thought this was, I mean, it was obviously going to be the rematch. I mean, that's yep. where it was going. We all knew that's where it was going. But they did a good job of being entertaining. Both promos were well. Sasha Banks looked great. I just, it, it, it worked perfect for me. Um, short and sweet. Kept it, did, did what they had to do. And they should have a bust-ass match going at SummerSlam. I mean, they, they have a lot to live up to because that was the match that stole both nights of WrestleMania. So they got... Just a little bit of stuff that they got to, you know, come up with. That is true. Yeah, so that's where we knew. We all knew it was headed there. We all knew it was a SummerSlam match. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, interesting that they're throwing Selena Vega in there. But this is the best I've seen Bel Air look recently since her, you know, she won the title. She looked, uh, you know, very confident. She looked sassy. It was it was, it was, was very well done for her. It's, it's a better look for her going in. Um, and I think she came off better than she has in the past. I think Sasha's that foil that she needs to kind of bring back that kind of attitude that she needs uh, to be better, especially on camera. Now, the next thing we got here was Dominic Mysterio versus Jey Uso. Remember, it was Jimmy versus Ray last week. Uh, with the help of Dominic, Ray was able to win here. Dominic says he's going to do it on his own, but he ends up losing. So, they got the match at SummerSlam. The tag team match will happen at SummerSlam, tag team title match. Now, is this going to cause a rift between Dominic and Ray? I know Ray has said in the past that he's not even thinking about facing his son in the ring. That he wants to just team with him. But I've always said, I think the one of the best storylines you could probably push is a Dominic versus Ray Mysterio match. Uh, could this lead to it, or would they just continue to be a tag team? Yeah, I think... Like of course that that makes perfect sense, but I just feel like it needs to be a, a bigger showcase of his father versus son, his mentor. You know what I'm saying? Like it can't just be like, oh, we're gonna do this at a September pay per view, whatever the hell that September pay per view is called, yeah. or you know, or even the Royal Rumble. That doesn't fit that because the Rumble is a bigger specter. I think something like if we could push that towards summer, towards WrestleMania time, something like that. I, I think that would be more interesting and more you know in place for something so big of of it being father versus son. I think maybe. Dominic can break away from him for a little bit, try to be that guy. I, I just wouldn't rush it. I don't, the, I don't see the point of rushing the storyline. It doesn't make any sense. More than anything, I would just have Dominic kind of separate from his father for a little bit, just say, I'm going to go on my own, and then kind of rehash it where it's father versus son later on. I just don't think it makes any sense to, like, put that on the back burner for something that isn't – because that could be a special thing. It's father versus son. It should be special. It should be, yeah. We'll see how long it takes, but until it happens, we're just going to get a bunch of different versions of Mysterios versus Usos yeah, uh, going to SummerSlam and then what happens how after. How many combinations. Yeah, how many combinations you can get before SummerSlam actually happens. That's probably what we're going to get going forward. Next thing on the show is Intercontinental Title Contenders Match. I hate these Contenders Matches. You got to beat the champion to get a shot at the champion. Um, makes no sense. Uh, but we get Shinsuke Nakamura versus Apollo Crews, the king of all WWEs. What he calling himself, Shinsuke Nakamura, mm -hmm. comes out. It's a disqualification because Commander Aziz gets involved. Not much to talk about here. Uh, it's seemingly, they have a few contenders for the IC title. Seemingly, it either will be Cesaro or Shinsuke Nakamura facing him at SummerSlam. Yeah. As we knew, as I, as we thought, the creative has ruined Apollo Crews' run. He, it doesn't feel special. It doesn't feel important. It's just kind of been... He's put it on the back burner, and him versus Shinsuke, let's face it, Shinsuke's been stop and go for years now, so it's like, well, well what are we going to get out of this? It's just, they've really been dropping the ball with, with, with Cruz's IC, IC champion. Does it feel important? Does it feel like, he just feels like an afterthought at this point. It's just, it's a shame. Yeah, and the time off he took recently kind of hurt it too as well, because yeah. he's been away for a while, comes back, and nothing really there set up for him as he came, as he came back. 
Uh, now, next thing in the show is an interesting one. We got Tegan Knox versus Tamina. Now, WWE refuses to address what's going to happen with these tag team titles because Natty is hurt. So, Tamina's kind of running out there by herself, holding both titles, having singles matches. Uh, you know, she saw what she's the match she had on Monday Night Raw. Now she's taking on Knox of Knox and Shotzi uh, on, on here on SmackDown. Knox gets the win. I only can only assume that Knox and Shotzi are the next in line to win these titles. Uh, we'll see how long Natty is out. Um, there's a standstill WWE's in right now. They don't want to give the titles to anybody else. They don't want to re relinquish the title because they don't have any tag teams really in that division. And then, again, they don't want to address what the story is with these tag team titles. Yeah, I mean, these belts have been kind of stinking from the get-go. I mean, just it's kind of... But what can you do at this point? Like, they, it sucks. Bad timing. Natty got hurt. They brought up this new tag team from NXT. Uh, and that was supposed to be the few going to SummerSlam. It, it might not happen. Who knows how bad she's hurt. At this point, it might just be... Somebody got to fill in for for for, for Natty. She to me has to find a partner, or we just have a handicap match. And they, I don't know. I mean, what what can you do? Or we just get rid of the belts for a while. Put this put this thing on a back burner until she gets healthy. It just this this also wasn't a great match. It wasn't a great segment. Um, there's not really any any fire, but you know, or anything to get behind with both of these groups. So I don't know. It's just not really working at all right now. It's not really right now. They got you got to figure something out because they're in a bad, bad spot when it comes to these bad titles. Spot. Whole situation. Next thing is so Edge and Seth Rollins set the date for SummerSlam. Edge comes out, cuts a promo talking about Seth Rollins and obviously the beatdown he received from Seth Rollins last week. Rollins shows up via satellite on a Titan Tron, and Edge would go out to challenge Rollins for a match at SummerSlam. He would not accept it. He would say he would think about it, but Edge would eventually sucker him into getting the title shot. So the match is set. Going to be a tremendous match. Going to be tremendous promos like this one leading up to the match. I just wonder if it's going to be a regular match or a stipulation involved. Uh, yeah, this was perfect. I love the fact that just like the meaning and tricking um, Seth into, into going into the match and going on the bait. I I loved it. I thought it was a great promo by Edge. I mean, this guy is just on another level promo wise right now. It's 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 everything he kind of talks about. Just you know, it just yep. every week it's good. Uh, Seth again, Seth is Seth. Seth. Seth's the man too. So it's 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 so good that we're gonna get to see Seth and Edge at SummerSlam. Should be a great match. I don't even think we need a stipulation. I just think we just let it be one of those matches where you know. Not that it's not a, it's not named a hardcore match or of or you know no rules match or whatever. Just let them do what they got to do, and that's it. I think both these guys can. I mean, this has the potential to steal the show. I think it's probably the match I'm most excited about going into into SummerSlam so far. So I'm just excited to see it. Let's do it. Let's get yeah, there. This seems to be the best match on the card, and probably the best match overall uh, yeah. that we're gonna see in a long time. So we got that. Then we get Bianca versus Zelina. Bianca gets the win, so Zelina loses the match. So she does. She I guess she doesn't get whoever wins the SummerSlam match. I think it's a waste of time. I think they should have had Sasha help Zelina get the win uh, in some form or fashion, and you know, you know, screw Bianca over, continue to set up Bianca and Sasha, and obviously you have a challenger in the weights waiting in the wings uh, for whoever wins that SummerSlam match. Yeah, I just feel like Zelina came back, and she probably didn't want to come back because they literally yeah. fired her husband like a week before she came back. So it's like they got nothing for her right now. They're kind of mixing her in here and throwing her in there. You know, if they really care, they might make it a triple threat, um, or they really push her after SummerSlam to be in, in the title picture, which probably is going to happen because there isn't really anybody else on the roster that's going to be able to come out of it and be in a title match with with with, with whoever wins at SummerSlam. So it just it kind of is what it is for her. Um, but yeah, it just kind of sucks that she came back. Her husband was fired. We were excited for a little bit, and it's just, yeah, she's kind of being throwing in as a little ploy in the feud between Bianca and Sasha. That's kind of what she is. She's just a little toy thrown in there. Yeah, she's just kind of just there holding a spot. We'll see what happens if it goes forward. They continue to build her if she gets built in any positive way possible. Next thing on the show is Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin. Obviously, the issue stemming from last week's contract signing, where it was supposed to be Finn Balor signing a contract to face Roman Reigns at SummerSlam, but Baron Corbin came in, tried to sign the contract. In the end, John Cena signed the contract. I want to preface this by beforehand. You had Caleb Braxton talking to Paul Heyman about what happened the week before, and he was obviously upset. And then when he goes after the interview, he gets confronted by a laughing, holding his money in the bank, Big E. So <laughs> So kind of a tease there that Biggie's waiting in the wings that he may cash in. But I we I think we all feel like he's gonna go to Raw, cash in over there when the draft happens. Uh so I don't think there's much of a threat there, but it's at least less for WWE to kind of tease it there. Uh so it's not so obvious. I mean, can he cash it in and just maybe win on, on Roman? It could be a possibility, but I don't think it's gonna go down that way. 
So we get Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin. Finn Balor destroys Baron Corbin, looking very serious. Uh, better than what he was before. He would say after the match on his promo, saying that, you know, the Finn Balor three years ago would have smiled at all this and kind of just accepted it. But he's not going to right now. The Prince is not going to. I did like his promo. A lot of confidence. Felt not like the NXT version that we just saw, but closer to it. Somewhere yeah. in between the NXT version and what we saw previously on the main roster. He's in between there. Hopefully, he starts to lean more to the NXT version of himself. He still wants to face Roman Reigns. Says he has, if he has to get through John Cena to do it, he will. Roman Reigns comes out, confronts him. Uh, he pushes Roman Reigns out the ring. Uh, and then here come the Usos to attack. He fights off the Usos, fights off Roman Reigns, but the numbers game is too much. They take him down. He gets choked out by Roman Reigns in the ring. Do no acknowledge Roman. Now we're going to take out Bowser. Like so many before. In the ring. No John Cena on this show, which kind of sucks for the live crowd. Uh, maybe showed up for a dark match afterwards. I don't know. Uh, but will we see Balor versus Cena before SummerSlam? Who knows? I'm not too sure about that. I think we might, maybe on the go home or something like that. But it's all set. Balor, I mean, uh, Cena reigns at SummerSlam. It, it's obviously set up for Balor to be the next opponent for probably most likely winning reigns at SummerSlam afterwards. So the pay-per-view is coming out afterwards, September, October. It's going to be Finn Balor as the opponent. Yeah, I, they did a good job of saving Finn from last week where he, he just kind of got shitted on uh, and they kind of threw him to the wayside. So it was nice to, that we got to see Finn come back, look better, look stronger, look like more of a threat to the championship, you know, being involved in the championship picture. And yep. almost for a second there, I was like, is it going to be a triple threat match for, you know, at SummerSlam, which is not going to be because SummerSlam is going to be Reigns and Cena. That's that's the money fight. But yeah, for sure, they're setting it up well for, for Finn to be the guy after to feud with, with with Roman, so keeping him, they had they, he looked really weak last week, but this year he looked, but this week he looked just as strong as he was weak last week. So I'm okay with with with, with the booking right now. Hope they continue this booking. I do like the fact that it's more NXT style Finn than that Finn that was in the main roster for those few years. Uh, just continue this. I think Hammer Cena on a SmackDown would be great. Uh, maybe like the week before. Or the, I mean, I wouldn't do it as the go home show, but definitely like the week, like maybe next week would, would be would be a great call to do it. Um, let's see, let's see what happens. But it was definitely a good way. I feel better about Finn. That's more, yeah. You know, that's that's what I got out of this whole night was I feel way better about Finn than I did last week. Yeah, definitely. It's a it's a kind of a good way to kind of turn the ship on Finn Balor uh, and make him more at least of a serious contender. He just seems the guy yeah. to be the next guy in line for that Universal Championship challenge. Uh, but nobody seems like anybody's even close to even beating Rain. So whoever's yeah. going to face is whoever's going to face. He's going to hold on to the title for at least a few more months. But guys, that's your review and reaction from tonight's episode of Friday Night SmackDown. We got some more SummerSlam matches announced. The fleshing out of the card is happening. Uh, we'll see what Raw has in store for us on Monday nights. But we appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you drop a like on this video. Hit the chair in the corner. Sub to the channel. Make sure you check out the pros and cons of CM Punk and Daniel Bryan AEW that dropped earlier today. Drop me a like on that one as well. Make sure you check that video out. And without further ado, if it doesn't work for you, brother, do not do the job. Later, folks.